Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College Basketball Zoomcast podcast. Coach Todd Simon of the Southern Utah University Thunderbirds stands in. This is a popular Big Sky Conference pick this year. They won their sectional championship in the Fort Myers tip-off this weekend. Coach, it was great to see you down there and really enjoyed watching your basketball team. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, you know, we uh, finally kind of get our groove back, getting our getting our legs back. And uh, we had a, had a good had a good week there. Yeah, very good week. Uh, you beat Yale, you beat Bowling Green. Uh, and like we say, you won that division. You got a solid group of players out there. And when they took the court, you know, they, they weren't just going through the motions and warm ups. I mean, they had some verve. They had some swag. It was really fun to watch. Yeah, we, it's kind of a little bit of our our hallmark, I guess you could say. You know, we we got a very strong belief in in what we're doing, and and our guys uh, play a lot of passion. We 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 enjoy the games, we enjoy practice. Um, you know, we try to try to keep that part of it, and I think that's helped us. You know, I think in the past when we've gotten tight and 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 really. Uh, you know, kind of tighten the screws on things that I didn't think we were as effective. And so, our, you know, we, our bench is going to, going to be up and hooting and hollering and we're going to get a bench warning and you guys are going to celebrate having, having a uh, uh, success on the court. And, and we're okay with that. There's such an interconnectivity with this group. You, you can tell they care about each other. I mean, you only, you only had to watch the celebration after the game uh, to appreciate this. Yeah, they really do. We, we've got a lot of good guys. You know, that locker room is full of guys that are willing to sacrifice for each other. And that's how winning works, you know. And and when you're when you're having success, you know, it's a little easier to do that. But but it's I think it's before that. And that's why you have success. I think, uh, you know, these guys generally root for one another and our, and our and our better players don't care about numbers. They don't care about all that. They want to see guys do well and they're, they're encouraging and upbeat and and uh, I think they have a genuine appreciation for one another. What's been the galvanizing theme with this group so far this year? Well, we had a lot of guys come back. You know, we have two um, super senior guards that, that, you know, could have moved on or graduated or played professional um, that elected to come back. And uh, we had a number of other guys that were, you know, all first team all league, second all team all league guys that, you know, in, in today's college basketball world, there, there's greener pastures out there, so to speak. And uh, they all uh, just, you know, wanted to come back for one another, make another run at this and try to get to the tournament. And I think that that joy and, and that appreciation and enjoying each other's company is, is a big part of that. Now, John Knight the third is your leading scorer at 19.3 points per game. Very impressive performer. His athleticism is off the chart and his leadership skills. He's a tough matchup, I think, for anybody who's going to see you. He is. Uh, you know, guys think they can go under on him, which which really doesn't really work because when you give him space, he's even even tougher. You're just giving him a little more momentum. and uh, But he can take you in the post as a point guard and he's strong. And, you know, he uh, – in transition, you better get in front of him. He's, he's, he's like a Westbrook. In, in transition that if he, once he gets downhill it, it's it's tough and he can change directions quick and and we move him all over the floor sometimes he's a screener he's a ball handler put him in the middle floor sometimes we're setting screens sometimes we don't and uh you know so you got a long day you know matching up with him because he's he's going to attack you from so many different ways talk a little bit about him growing in the program how, how did he come in and what what skills have you seen just take off while he's been there yeah, when we he was a transfer from Utah State, a uh, very good junior college player. And uh, when we got him, we weren't quite sure. We knew we could do some isolation stuff with him. We knew he was quick. We figured, uh, you know, we weren't quite sure if he was a guy that could play on the ball, with, you know, but a lot of guys that are like him aren't necessarily great decision makers. And then, and then about after a semester of in his redshirt year, he was able to just become an elite decision maker. I mean, he'll find you if you're open. And, uh, and I think that's what he's developed a, a game where he plays on two feet at all times. And so he's under control and guys can't just take charges on him anymore. And he's going to pivot and, and he's going to find shooters and he, he knows when to throttle down and change speed. So 
he's really become a very high IQ player and, and uh, a guy that probably a coach down the line because he sees the game so well. Tevi and Jones averaged 20 points per game in those two games in Fort Myers. He gets up 28% of your shots when he's in the game. Yeah, you know, Tev, preseason player of the year of our league, you know, he's like a, a Durant style player for big sky level. He's six seven and athletic. He can get a shot off at any time. He can score multiple levels. And, and when his feet are set, you know, we, we think it's a 70% shot. And, and he and John play off each other so well. And, uh, you know, he hasn't found that groove quite yet like he was last year, but he's, he's you know, this last game, he kind of had a little, little bit of a breakout. And we think that uh, his best is, uh, is ahead of him coming up. I was interested in uh, seeing Mason Fawcett. He's averaging a double-double for you. Uh, another kid, it's a, di it's a tough matchup for different reasons. Yeah, he is. He's, he's, he, he can, he's so tough that he can play a five, but he's really like a, a big guard. Uh, he's tough as nails. There's no 50-50 balls with him. He's getting them all. And uh, we can post them. We can pop for three. He's a 40 from three guy. So he's an inside out threat. And uh, again, we play him at five through three, move him all over the floor. And, uh, you know, you essentially got to match down to him because he can't score on him in the post. He's so strong and he's just a unique player. And uh, he gives us a lot of versatility. Yeah. I was going to ask about his athleticism and length on defense. Uh, you know, as you can move him around on offense, I'm, I'm assuming you, you're going to assign him to one of the other team's better scorers. Yeah, he really moves his feet. He's going to slide. He's going to take charges. Uh, I mean, he's so tough. They just never going to give you anything and uh, you trust him. So, you know, all those factors just make him a, a very, very good player on that side of the floor. Dre Marin, fifth year player in the program, 37.9% from three coming into this season. He's been down a little bit on his three point shot, but I know it's a kid, you know, with the experience he has, he'll figure that out. Yeah, last year he was third in the nation in catch and shoot three percentage. And, uh, you know, so if he gets a crease and, and he doesn't get very many, you know, people are face guarding him, trying to take him away. And, uh, but he, he's very good in ball screens. He's, he's not going to turn the ball over. He's tough as nails. He, you know, he draws the other team's better perimeter players and, uh, and just guards all over the floor. I mean, and uh, we play him a lot of minutes. So he's just one of those guys that does everything right. And, and you know, call him a glue guy would be an injustice because he does all that glue guy stuff, but at a superstar level. And, uh, you know, he can he's put us on his back for some games. He's a guy who can get you 30 if he needs to. When you put this group together, what were some of the qualities and characteristics you were looking for? Competitiveness. You know, I want guys that are going to compete. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes some of these guys, you know, that you, they, you get mislabeled. Some guys whose cup boils over a little bit, bit can be misconstrued as, oh, that guy's a knucklehead. That's not, you know, some guys are just hyper competitive. And that's the kind of guys I want. I want guys that are going to battle you tooth and nail and, and, and leave it out there and do whatever it takes to win. And uh, that's, that's first and foremost for me, if I can get those type of guys. Big Sky Conference is going to be uh, another uh, jam-packed uh, effort for you this year. As you guys, this is your last year in there. You'll be moving on to the WAC. Talk about what you're going to see inside the league and then your thoughts on a transition after this year. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, an absolute war. Um, we're, we're going to be the hunted this year. You know, last year we were picked seventh and uh, you know, end up going 12 and two win the league and go 20 and four overall. And uh, we're not sneaking up on anybody, you know, everyone's got us circled a little bit as, as the favorite. And uh, we embrace that, you know, it's, just, it's, we have to be okay with uh, not putting ourselves in that position to be David again. You know, it's okay to be Goliath. Goliath won a lot. <laughs> and let's, let's be that. And, uh, and, and so we, 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 you know, we're going to embrace that. You know, we got a tricky deal. We're, we're a lone wolf for majority of our uh, opponents in our league. We don't have a travel partner this year, you know, in, in our last year of the league. So guys are going to come in well rested with five days of practice, just about every game. And we gotta, we gotta be that good to overcome that, which is going to just get us ready for the tournament. Uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, 
dynamic in your schedule as they will be that rested. How do you, how do you change maybe mid season? Uh, is it going to be more film and walk through stuff if you played earlier that week? Yeah, and I think that's the beauty of being older, you, you know, and for us, I mean, we have such a large playbook, a lot of NBA quick hitters, that sort of thing. So for us, mm -hmm. we can, look one way offensively in a game and the next game look completely different in terms of what we're running and, and what we're, what we're going to exploit. So, so the nature of what we are, I think we can um, be very, you know, versatile and we can be very hard to guard without having to do three hour practices in season. So I think that'll be, that'll be easy and good for us. Yeah. You know, I looked at the team and I watched, you know, the different modes of attack you have. It's really impressive, you know, to see how deep is that playbook. Yeah, we, I, th I mean, I think upwards of 250, 300 little quick hitters or actions we had by the end of last season, you know, when we started to put the, you know, now if we don't claim that many. And a lot of times we're putting the five little wrinkles in for this, for this opponent. And next game, we got five little wrinkles that we're going to emphasize for this opponent and the rest of it's, you know, pretty, pretty much our standard stuff, our little pods of plays that we have. And, and they're not long, elaborate timing plays, you know, where we're very much more NBA, you know, spread and, and read and, and here's the attack. And, and then we move players around. A lot of stuff can look a lot different, you know, when uh, we're setting a ball screen for our five man instead of our one, all of a sudden it's a whole different coverage. So we just try to be very versatile, very, um, very football like, you know, mm -hmm. here's the same play out of a different formation and, and uh, make teams guard that same action, but come at it a different way. So it's just a little bit of a, a easy way for us to, to, to have a lot in the book. I was curious uh, with NIL being a, a thing, you know, back in the summer uh, and all that, talk a little bit about NIL, like at the big sky level. I, kn I know it's going to be different there probably than like power five or multi-bid league. Yeah, it is. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of what, what you make of it, you know, and I think we, you know, we've got some guys that are very ingrained in our community. You know, they've done some commercials here for, you know, local restaurants yeah. and, yeah. and uh, do built basketball clinics and, and, and so they've embraced it and, and taken advantage of it. And that's what they should do. And, uh, but it does twofold that it's also good for our community. You know, I think it's getting these guys um, working with kids or giving an opportunity to, to do some workouts or, 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 you know, be visible in the community. That's only, it's only helping uh, our presence and our attendance and, and the whole experience. For people who don't know, uh, talk about how the community there embraces this team. I mean, you, you guys are the show in St. George, Utah. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, you know, we've, we've got a nice little thing going. We're, we're, you know, our student section now, you know, we've been getting 1600, 1800 students and, and we got a 5,300 seat arena that's, that gets super loud now and, and, and people are coming out and we're selling a bunch of tickets and it is something for, for the community during these winter months to have uh, something that we can rally around. And, you know, I think we've won 15 straight, I believe now at home. And uh, so it's kind of been, been something that, Hey, we, you can come here, have a good time for, for an evening and, and, uh, and you're going to, you're going to enjoy the show. As you look around college basketball this season, uh, you know, the games, uh, in my opinion, are, are they're, they feel like most of them are even closer or even more of them are not decided going into like the last four minutes. Uh, I, I was curious if what your opinions are on that and then maybe what some of the themes are as we see the season continue to unfold. It's very interesting. I, I think the, Team building has has changed, you know, with the portal. I think you're seeing, you know, teams that maybe were relying on guys to kind of get better every year or become that guy that emerges in his fourth year or his third year, and and all of a sudden now you're kind of recruiting transfers that've been in the program for three four months and and counting on those guys. I think in some situations it it, it doesn't help. You know, I, I don't know that it's adding to the product. I think there's going to be a um, self-correcting uh part of that at some point where where you know i think it's the trend right now and i think if people are going to realize that hey that 
rebuilding a team on the fly is, is not always easy. And you're, there's some stuff that comes with it. Now on the flip side of it, everyone's older. Everyone got an extra year. There's a lot of super seniors. There's a lot of, a lot of teams that hung together because of the extra COVID year. So you're seeing a recipe for, to me, like the teams that, that are kind of rebuilding on the fly and try to try to kind of do quick fixes. And, and you have a lot of teams that are older. Those are great recipes for competitive basketball games, I think. Coach Todd Simon at Southern Utah, folks. This is a basketball team that I'm going to go ahead and say it. Uh, these these teams in the NCAA tournament, and, and, as long as – and this is the bad thing. As long as you guys don't get upset somewhere in the big sky, they're not going to want to see you sitting on that bracket line. Coach uh, – and that's a compliment. Coach, it's great talking to you. It was great to visit with you last week, and uh, I'll be following you going forward. 